Hey guys, so I wanted to go over this assignment with you, not to show you the skills that you learned in the chapter, but some other things um, that you might need to know, and also some uh, design uh, advice that I think you should follow. So the first thing is, is you can do a very basic, let's go back to the assignment, you can do a very basic menu like this, and that is absolutely fine. I'm just trying to see that you can use the skills that you learned in lesson two. However, if you are into graphic design and you want to keep practicing or building things for your portfolio, then feel free to be as extra as this menu is looking right now. Um, but if you want to add color, even if you're in here, there's a little bit of color and color really helps to um, separate information. So as you can see, the red here helps to define what the name of the dish is called. And it's a little bit harder in InDesign to actually add color because this is meant to go to print. And when you send it off to a professional printer, they need to know the Pantone or the CMYK swatches that they're going to use and how many colors you're going to have in your document, etc. So as you can see, when I open up my swatches panel by going to Window, Color, Swatches, I have all these swatches. These are the brand swatches for the college I'm the marketing manager for. And so... Um, all of these I have automatically in every InDesign document. So I'm going to actually delete those. And what I want to do is add in this yellow and this orange so that I can keep using it throughout the document. So I'm going to go ahead and click this menu button and choose new color swatch. And this is where it's going to ask me what kind of color mode it should be. We're just going to do CMYK, that's for basic printing. And then we have to give it the values. So um, now you can find those values if you go into Illustrator or Photoshop or whatever, um, or if you already have a logo that you're using for your restaurant. And by the way, um, you can create, recreate or redesign a really bad menu. You can create your own logo from scratch. This seems like I'm like amazing and just did this real quick, but I just cheated and took this from um, Shutterstock. So don't judge me, but I just wanted to make this video quick. So anyway, this yellow right here, see how it has C, M, Y, K, has those values. So 1, 33, 92, and 0. I'm going to go into InDesign, and I'm going to type that in. 1, 33, 92, and 0. Okay, so that's the gold, and now when it's added in here, I can use that on all kinds of other stuff. And then it tries to put it in CC libraries, which is cool, but I never use it, and it's annoying that it pops up, so I'm going to close it. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and hit cancel and grab something that's orange and do the same thing, 264910. All right, so new swatch, 264910. and zero. Okay, and then every document automatically has white and black. So paper is considered white um, in InDesign because when it prints it doesn't actually print white it just you know leaves that space on the paper empty okay so now a couple of design things I've put a couple of um, menu items here and ooh, sorry so that you can see them and notice that I have kept it really consistent with alignment so everything is perfectly aligned here on the left and then I've also added a consistent size gap between um, items. And this helps to the user to read and understand when what each chunk is. So these two, because they are close together, look like they are one chunk, which they actually are. So we want them to think that. And then this gap allows us to see that this is the start of a new chunk. Now, one of the design principles you should always follow is contrast. Because I have a really dark background, I need to come over here and change the color to white just so I can see it on my background. Now, this is another reason why I have swatches open. Because if I want to change the font color, what I need to do is in swatches, I'll click on this T so that the formatting only affects the text. If I hit white right now, it's going to do a white background, which is what I don't want. So I'll click the text and choose white. And now I can move this over onto my menu. Okay. So then it's just a matter of choosing some of your styles. So what I would do is um, 
So for instance, because I want to affect this entire text box, I'm going to do a paragraph styles here. And in terms of consistency, that's a big thing with graphic design. I'm going to try to be consistent with what I see here. Um, so maybe um, since this has lines and I need to put a title called appetizers here, I might put appetizers in this corduroy font and then have the orange lines or at least one orange line to the side of it to make it consistent so that it all looks like it's cohesive. Um, and same with this, I'm going to come over here and say, okay, I want the title of each thing to be corduroy. So I'm just going to come type in here, cor, I can't remember if it's a U, nope, or a corduroy. There you go. So I want it to be corduroy and I maybe want it to be orange. Oops. See, I do it every time. There we go. And maybe I want it to be 14 point font or slightly bigger. Um, and then once I have that created, I can come over here and I'm going to do a new paragraph style where I'm going to call this menu item title. Oops. Okay. So once I have that, I can actually click, then hold shift and click all the other titles and come over here to the paragraph styles and choose menu item style. Now the cool thing with this is if I come over here and decide later, I want it to be this gold color, I could come change it right here and see now how all the other ones haven't changed. But if I'm on menu item style, style let's see, redefine style, see how it says redefine style? If I click that, see how now all of those change to gold too? So I can make any changes I want. Let's say I, this is too big and I want it to be 14 and I come redefine style, it's going to change it across all of them. So um, I'm going to go ahead and undo that because I actually liked it to be orange. Okay, there we're back to um, our setup. So then remember character styles are kind of in paragraph. So see how this one has like this additional, you can add Phoenix chicken or pulled pork for an additional $5. So this is something where I might go to character styles and I'm going to change this to Helvetica Noia italic. And then I'm going to make this gold. And then for this character styles, again, I'm going to add one. I'm going to say additional add, add stuff line. Let's just keep it like that. So now when I have this one, I'm going to come in and apply that add stuff line. So that's basically what you're doing with this menu um, is you are recreating one um, or you're creating your own and you're showing me that you can do paragraph styles and character styles and that you can do things like contrast. So again, we have light on dark or dark on light. Don't do something like blue on blue. Um, and then also I just wanted to show you how to add some colors and keep it very consistent. All right, so uh, I did wanted to show you I, um, the original menu I was working from. I found on BuzzFeed like this article that said the ugliest menus, like 17 ugliest menus. So that's definitely something you can do. And if I open this up, I'm going to show you what I mean by alignment and like design issues. See how it just looks so cluttered? And then you can see that none of this stuff is aligned, especially right here. Um, and it makes it really hard, even just with center alignment, it makes it really hard for um, somebody to read this. So make sure you're just keeping things very clean, and very aligned. And then as you can see, there's all these like capital letters. Don't do weird stuff like that. Sometimes, rarely, it'll work for things. Like if this, if you were designing a logo for a roller co coaster called Chaos, then I would expect you to do something weird with the capital capitalization, but it doesn't make any sense here and just makes it harder to read. So, um, and then just finding a way to make it look like it's it's easier for people to understand how to read this is, is a big thing. I think I just said that, sorry. So anyway, if you have any questions, let me know. But again, you can go very basic with this or very extra with this, but I hope to see some design principles incorporated whether it's simple or complicated.